Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to verify the Gaz Webbid summer forecast for today's uh, second video. So we released our summer forecast uh, on the 30th of May. And uh, of course we're into September uh, now. We're well beyond uh, meteorological summer, although... Astronomical summer doesn't actually end until the 21st of September, but never mind, we are into uh, meteor meteorological uh, autumn now, as fine by the UK Met. So uh, it's time to uh, review our uh, summer forecast, and uh, I shall get on it back for you in a second. We'll see how we did, how the forecast uh, performed. Uh, so it's very important, I think, that we go back and uh, look at our long-range forecast when we, when we release them, good or bad, um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, verify what happened. So uh, that's what we're going to do uh, for this one. Just say about the first video release, it was our 7 a.m. Uh, forecast. We've got the week ahead forecast coming up for you very shortly, and a 10 to 14 uh, day as well. So keep checking back to the channel for all of the updates and content. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Thank you so much, Rich, of the summer forecast gift. This will be the final time you see the summer forecast gift, because this verification is going to close the door. Well, and truly firmly shut on summer 2021. Right, so let's see what happens. So I'll just go through the forecast very first of all, then we'll see what happened. So the forecast was for a mixed uh, traditional British summer, that is how we uh, termed it. We said that uh, it wouldn't be a disaster of a summer, we won't, we won't have a washout, it won't be a 2007 or, or a 2012, you know, it would be one of those suns that range from beginning to end, but neither would it be, you know, right, the very best. It wouldn't be a 76, it wouldn't be a 95, it wouldn't be a 2018 with baking hot sunshine uh, day after day. So it'd be somewhere in, in, in the middle, you know, very traditional sort of uh, mixed summer with periods of dry and quite warm weather and uh, also periods of, of cooler and more unsettled. That's like the headline, uh, how we termed it. Uh, we said, but compared to more recent summers, we probably won't get the really intense heat spikes. We thought those would be a little bit further eastwards uh, this year. So um, we said, you know, those very, very intense heat spikes at temperature into the upper 30s, Celsius knocking on the door, not far from 40 degrees that we've had over past few summers, would be, you know, would be unlikely. We didn't rule it out, but we said probably Probably a lower chance of that happening. Uh, we said temperature is probably a bit above average, not excessively hot though, uh, so around a degree or so above the 81, 2010 average, something like that. Uh, and uh, we said precipitation wise, probably average, some areas a little bit drier than average, perhaps. What did come through is that we'll probably see a deterioration as the, as the summer goes along. Uh, you know, we said that uh, it would have the dry, driest, warmest weather compared to average early on in the summer in June, and then, then there'll be a deterioration uh, as the summer uh, uh, developed. We thought that uh, July probably coming out the worst, June the best to average, uh, and, and August, uh, you know, somewhere in between. It's in between. Uh, but the definite idea that as the summer progresses, things things go downhill after a main dry and and uh, very warm start in uh, June. Um, so that's that's you know what what we said. It was a very low confidence forecast actually. Uh, so um, it was delivered you know uh, without much uh, faith in it. But uh, that's as much as we managed to come up with for this summer. Well, this is how uh, this is how the summer. This is how June uh, first of all looks in terms of the temperature to average uh, at uh, the UK Met. So uh, it was a warmer than average June uh, across all parts of the country. Uh, warmest weather was actually in eastern areas where the temperature anomaly was around one and a half degrees above average. Otherwise, we were around half degree to one degree above the uh, 81 to 2010 average in June. So, so we started off with a pretty warm June. Uh, July uh, looks uh, looked like that in terms of the uh, mean temperature anomaly. So again, another warmer than average month in most areas, except in a very, very extreme southeast corner where we come out near to normal. More about that in a moment. But generally, it's a warmer than average uh, July again. It gets progressively warmer the further north you go, which is quite unusual. Something we did not predict in our summer forecast. But uh, again, more about that in, in, in a moment. Uh, but it does get warmer the further north you go. So the highest temperature to average, actually, across western, southwestern Scotland, where uh, we go to around two degrees above average. Otherwise, generally, it's like one, one and a half degrees above average uh, in most areas. And then August for the uh, temperature anomaly comes out like that. And August is uh, is a cooler month. So uh, Scotland and Northern Ireland is still a bit above average, around half a degree to one degree above average. Uh, most
those central parts of the country and Wales uh, coming out about average. And the far south, southeast actually comes away with a colder than or a cooler than average uh, month during uh, during August. So there's that deterioration um, that uh, we spoke about. Definitely from a temperature perspective, the, the anomalies do slide later on in the summer. The summer overall looks like that in terms of the uh, mean temperature anomaly. So you see again, very much the idea that it gets progressively warmer uh, the further north you go, which is very unusual. Doesn't normally work out like that. Normally it's hotter the further south you go, but this summer gets uh, hotter the further north you go. So for Western Scotland, we come away with a hot summer. Temperatures in some areas around one and a half to two degrees above average in most deep red colours. Otherwise, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England coming out uh, at around, uh, so on the temperature scale, around one, and a half, one to one and a half degrees uh, above average. And the rest of the country away from the far south and southeast where it is near normal coming away around half a degree to one degree above average. Average. So I think from the temperature side of things, the forecast went reasonably well. It was that rather warmer than average summer than we, ex but we expected. Not excessively hot, except for that small area in Western Scotland where we do see like a very high uh, anomaly to, to average two degrees. But otherwise, you know, it, it's warm and average, but not excessive. Precipitation uh, wise of the summer 2021 it looks like that. So uh, again we see a relatively dry summer in many areas. Uh, most most places coming away with a dry and average summer. The far south and southeast is significantly wetter than average though. Really south and east of London uh, we see a, a very wet summer down there which again is very unusual for the summer to be as wet as that uh, in the south, and then for northern and western Scotland, that's where the driest anomalies to average are. With some places across northern and western Scotland, like in 30% of their average rainfall. Uh, whereas some a limited place across southern England are like getting 150 percent of their average rainfall. It is a very very strange summer the way these anomalies have worked out. But clearly it's hotter and drier the further north and west you go, and cooler and wetter the further south and southeast you go. On the precipitation side of things, we said like average rainfall. We we sort of plump for average, but we did sort of say that one or two areas might come away with a drier than average summer. I don't think I'm a Side, it was uh, an overly bad forecast. Now, we did not predict sunshine uh, amounts, but I thought we'd just include this because, again, it highlights how uh, bizarre the summer of 2021 was. In that, uh, Western Scotland and southwest Scotland comes away with a very sunny summer, uh, with some places having like 135% of their average sunshine. Most of Scotland, Northern Ireland and North West England come away with above average sunshine. But again, through like South Wales, the Midlands, and then down into southern South East England, it's actually a very dull summer, uh, with some places like only getting 70% uh, percent of their average uh, sunshine. So uh, it, it was a very, very odd summer, the way it works out, but it's warmer, warmest, driest and hottest in the North West and, and, and coolest uh, wettest and, and dullest in, in the south and southeast. Very strange, uh, sort of how that uh, works out. Uh, now, I just want to show you this. So, this was our uh, analogue for. Uh, no, this is actually how the summer of 2021 uh, turns out. Sorry. So, so, this is how it looks in terms of a 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly. So, you see why it was uh, why it was best in the north in terms of hot and dry weather. Because you have this area of above average height. It's high pressure sitting just to the north of the country. This white area is near normal pressure. But it clearly pressure is weaker further south and higher further north. And actually this white area uh, sometimes, particularly, um, you know, through July, I think, uh, fills up with a trough of low pressure that is uh, really sort of threatening southern areas with, with uh, heavy rain and potentially uh, cool and, and wet weather at times. Whereas further north, the closest area of high pressure, and that brings uh, the driest weather to the northern half. Of the Just a strange anomaly. You don't see that sort of anomaly all that often. Now, this is our analogue uh, for um, summers that have five inches or more within our methodology. Um, no, not like for light match, uh, but it, you can see like a similarity there. 
I think. So, so you see, but we do, uh, with our analog, we do get like the above average heights to the north and northwest. Just suggest, we didn't pick up on this, or I didn't pick on, up on this within the summer forecast, but look at, look at that, it does suggest that like the warmest, driest weather is likely to be further north, and then coming southwards, we get the low pressure in over France, and so you would expect that that will bring the, the wettest weather um, and like the, the coolest, dullest weather to more southern areas. As I say, within the, within the uh, summer forecast, that is not something that I mentioned, and uh, you know, it, I, it went unnoticed. But uh, going back and looking at it retrospectively, you can actually see the hints are there, can't you? That uh, that northern areas and northwestern areas would get a better summer than southern and southeastern areas, and a little bit unusually uh, so, because that is quite a strange thing uh, to happen. So, so again, that's how we come out with the analog for for summer 2021. Now, that's how summer 2021 looks, uh, and that's how our analog look for the year scoring five or more. Most notable within that, I think, is 1977, which uh, is very much uh, a summer that is is hottest and driest to the north and west and, and coolest. The wettest to the south and southeast, but but yeah, an interesting interesting summer. Quite a strange uh, summer in a lot of respects. Um, the way it gets better to the north and, and worse if you think of cool or wet weather in summer being worse. Some people enjoy it being cool or wet in summer, of course, but if, if you don't, uh, then it gets worse the further south and east you go. Now, in terms of the summer, so I'm quite pleased how the analogue came out, actually. Uh, you know, I think the analogue was hinting at, at, at what was going to happen was along the right lines, uh, even if it's not exact like for like match. They never are, because every, you know, every year is unique and individual, every month is unique, every season is unique, every year is, is unique. But within that, I think the analog for those years scoring five hits or more within our um, within within our forecast methodology, uh, I think they were along the right lines. So I'm quite pleased how the analog turned out. I'm reasonably pleased how the summer forecast turned out. To be honest, I think we did as good as we could have uh, reasonably uh, done. It was a very difficult forecast because there wasn't any particular years, but led the pack. Um, you know, so so uh, and the years that we had were quite contrasting uh, as well, even though the analogue in the end did come out reasonably uh, close to hinting at what was going to happen through the summer anyway. So I am quite pleased with how it all worked out, uh, to be honest. Certain things didn't go right. We did highlight that um, July is probably going to be the worst month of the summer. Clearly that wasn't the case. July is actually the best month of the summer, even in the south, we managed to get like a week or so of pretty hot weather uh, through through July. Um, so not everything worked out, it never does, uh, but uh, we're sort of along the right lines, I think, with this summer forecast. I think we probably did as good as anybody uh, with this uh, summer forecast, actually. Um, you know, uh, so, so I'm quite pleased with how our forecast went out, went, went, went out, you know, let me know in the comments what you think to the summer forecasting, it was okay, I think we did all right uh, with this one, and I always struggle with summer as well, because a lot of the drivers switch off in the summer, so, you know, like the QBO, and so, all of those things that are very important for winter forecasting are the key drivers, they tend to sort of switch off uh, a lot in the summer and have uh, far less impacts, so summer is always, in some ways, the hardest season to forecast for, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it went, it's probably the best summer forecast uh, that, uh, that I've ever come up with, and, uh, you know, it was a difficult forecast as well, so, uh, so I am very pleased uh, with how how that um with how that came out so uh, so yeah i think we did all right i think we did all right this uh forecast it follows on from a couple of decent forecasts for winter and for the spring as well so we seem to be on a bit of a run at the moment i'm sure we're going to get a <laughs> bad one coming along for ten so maybe it'll be this autumn forecast because that was also delivered with very low confidence uh so uh, you're only as good as your last forecast in this business and uh <laughs> i'm sure that uh, uh we'll have a bad one one, uh, cropping up, you know, have a stinker before too much time. But I think the summer one uh, was, was all right. I'm quite pleased with how that came out. Uh, right. OK, so that's it. That closes the door. One tree shut on summer 2021. I want to say thank you so much again to uh, to Rich for the, for the gift. Uh, thank you so much to Shryan and to Terry as well for all of the help through the summer updates and with the summer forecast. You know, it's a very much a group effort. So uh, thank you to Terry, to Shryan and also to, to Rich as well uh, for all the help during the uh, summer 
uh, update season and with the forecast, uh, which I think as a group effort has been pretty, pretty good. I'm quite pleased with it. Right, okay, so let me know in the comments what you think about our summer forecast. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're closing the door on uh, on, on summer 2021 uh, now. Uh, so we're going to be uh, back later on with our weekend forecast at 10 to 14 days as well. Check back uh, for those. And uh, tomorrow, of course, we're long range bandwagon never stops. We've released our autumn forecast. We're starting, we have started winter updates over long range, never stops at Gas. So that means there will be the second winter 2021-2022 update coming up for you uh, tomorrow. It'll be exciting, won't it? But for this verification for the summer 2021 forecast, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.